What's going on guys? It's Harrison and Evan from the Wildlife Brothers. And today we're out here in Eastern Pennsylvania taking a look at some of our favorite amphibian species, salamanders. Now there's a big creek right behind us and we're gonna get down into the environment and see how many species we can find. It's actually been a great year for salamander diversity here in Eastern Pennsylvania. So we stand the chance of coming across things like Northern two lines and maybe some rare species like long tails or maybe even a Northern red. So we're gonna get out into the creek and see what we can find. What's the goal today, bro? Today, we're out here looking for some salamanders. So we came out to this little creek system, and what we're looking for are any wide, flat rocks in the water here that the salamanders are gonna be hiding under. So we're gonna slowly make our way up this creek and see what kind of species we can come across. All right. There he is. Nice. All right. First two line of the day. Yep, surprisingly, but let's get him on film. So this little guy is the northern two-line salamander, probably the most common salamander species we get here in eastern Pennsylvania. And in fact, they're found all throughout the northeastern United States, up through parts of Canada, and of course, down the east coast as well. You can see they're an absolutely adorable little species. This is still fairly small. We've seen some bigger ones in the past, and you can see that he has that nice bright yellow tail that kind of fades into a darker gray or brown body, and that actually helps them have a bit of camouflage out here on the rocks. So a salamander this small will have a fair number of predators. Things like wading birds, bullfrogs, snakes, and other animals will try to eat these guys, so they do spend a lot of their time hiding under rocks or logs, anywhere where they can find some cover, and also they will forage in the creek systems as well. They are almost entirely insectivorous, feeding on small aquatic invertebrates like earthworms, or little mayfly larva, stuff like that. Anything out here that they can fit into that tiny little mouth of theirs. And like all salamanders, and in fact all amphibians, these guys exhibit a behavior called cutaneous respiration, essentially meaning that they breathe through their skin. Now because of that, actually touching them like this would normally be somewhat harmful to them unless you keep them nice and wet. So actually you're seeing I'm gonna dunk this guy in some water right now and make sure my hands are nice and wet. And that's because the oils on our skin can actually irritate these guys if we don't keep our hands nice and wet. So that's why we periodically, as we're handling them, dip them into water and make sure our hands are nice and wet to keep these guys safe as we're working with them. Oh wow, a little, little red back, tiny. Wow, oh, wow. He is the smallest salamander I've ever seen. Can you grab him? I got him. Yeah, I got him. No way. Wow, wait until you guys see this little salamander. Ready? All right, let's see him. Wow. Take a look at how small this redback salamander is. This is absolutely the smallest salamander I personally have ever caught. And now I found this guy under a little moss covered rock and that's pretty typical for redback salamanders. These guys are usually found under rocks and logs by the water's edge, typically not in the stream like the two lines and dusky salamanders that we're looking for today. But it's really cool to see another salamander species out here and I'm hoping to get an adult individual on camera as well. But take a look at this guy. He is absolutely adorable. There we go. He's right under your hand now. Yep. See if you can scoop up some of the dirt under him. Yeah, that's a good idea. Oh, I got him. He ran right into your hands. Nice call. This guy is the long-tailed salamander, a species that we have always wanted to show to you guys. So if you take a look down his body there, the first thing you'll notice is that beautiful orange coloration, which is incredibly distinct. There are very few other salamander species in Pennsylvania with coloration that is quite that bright. And let's take a look at his tail there. You can see that? Yeah, I can. They are called long-tailed salamanders because their tails are usually longer than the length of their bodies. And I don't know if you can see this, but can you get that tiger stripe patterning on his tail there? Yeah, I can see it going right down it. Yeah, there you go. That is one of the most distinct identifying features of the long-tailed salamanders, and also one of my favorite points about their coloration. That is just such a cool pattern. 
Now, one of the interesting things about the long-tailed salamander is that they are endemic to the Appalachian Mountain region of the United States. That is the only place in the world where these guys can be found. And long-tailed salamanders are part of a group of amphibians called the cave salamanders, which include a number of species that are primarily found in mountain stream and cave habitats. Now, the fun thing about the long-tailed salamander, as opposed to some of the other cave salamanders, is that oftentimes in warm or humid weather like we're having today, they will move out of the mountain streams and down into woodland areas, and they'll hide under rocks and logs, which is exactly where we found this little guy. Now, I think he was probably doing some hunting. These guys, like all salamanders, will feed on a variety of invertebrate prey, small insects and things like that. But we are so fortunate to come across this species of salamander, especially because they are so uncommon throughout a lot of their range. These guys are subject to a lot of pollution, and because their habitat is so limited, any time a bit of their habitat becomes unsuitable for them to survive, it is a really big blow. So it's incredibly exciting to see this species out in our local environment, because that means our ecosystem is very healthy. So here is yet another long tail salamander that we've come across today, and you'll notice that this guy actually doesn't have a tail right now. The reason for that is due to an ability that all salamanders have called caudal autonomy. Now basically, that's the ability to drop off their tail in the event of a predator attack. So basically, what they can do is sever the muscles that connect their tail to the rest of their body, and it actually causes it to drop off, and because of the electrical impulses in it, it'll keep wiggling around and can potentially Eventually distract a predator and allow these guys a chance to escape. So it's a totally natural process that really doesn't hurt them long term. You can actually see that the skin is just starting to cover the injury now, which means that the tail is starting to grow back. So in just a few weeks to maybe a month, that tail will be at full length again, and even though it does deplete them of some nutrients in the short term, this guy will be completely okay in just a few weeks. So we're gonna let this guy go. We don't wanna handle him too, too much when he's in this vulnerable state, but that's definitely ability that we wanted to highlight for you guys, because it's a super cool thing that all salamanders can do. So what just happened, bro? So on one of our last flips of the day, I just turned over this northern red salamander. This is the second one we found this year, and we are so happy to be able to get this species on camera in addition to all of the other salamanders that we found today. Now, we have a full episode coming out soon about the northern red, so we're not gonna do a segment today, but this is still so cool. This is now our fourth salamander species of the day, and actually the largest northern red that I personally have ever seen. She is absolutely massive. Take a look at that. What a way to round off this day of salamander hunting here in Pennsylvania. So this was a pretty great day of herping, I think. Coming across four species of salamander in one day is definitely a treat. Yeah, and especially species we didn't expect to find between the northern red Absolutely. and the long tail. Those were species when we were planning this episode that we didn't actually think we would get on camera, so that was super exciting. Definitely, sure. yeah. So if you guys did enjoy the salamander hunt, leave a like on the video and comment down below which salamander species we came across was your favorite. And make sure to subscribe to the Wildlife Brothers now because we have so much content coming out for you guys that you will not want to miss so we will see you in another episode.